Hello everyone, I wanted to share a little video that can give us a better understanding of how embodied change actually works. And I'll share two examples with you. And we'll draw little pictures and I think that'll help make sense of things. Because the question that I always get from people is, you know, I feel so good after I go through an embodiment session or a particularly good movement practice, some somatic work. Uh, but then I lose it when I go back out into the world. I lose things. And so that's one question you might want to keep in mind is how quickly do you fall back into your habitual patterns? So how quickly do you revert into the way you've always been? It's just something to think about. It's not something to judge or, or to criticize, but it's worth keeping in the back of your mind. How quickly do you revert after a particular session? Because what's happening when we go into embodiment work is we are essentially adjusting what's known as your self-image, right? We're adjusting the way that you picture yourself in the world. Because you emerge, you as you are now, emerge out of the sum total of all of your life experiences. Every event, every interaction, every experience you've ever had makes up the soil of your being in some sense. So you are essentially the average, let's say, of all of your life experiences, for better or for worse. Now what happens when we go into somatics or embodiment work is we give yourself a new experience, something way outside the norm. Maybe you, you get an experience of feeling particularly at ease within your body. Or maybe you get a particular experience of feeling very grounded in yourself, very confident. You get an experience of being very present. You get an experience where you're free from pain even for a moment. And what happens is that these experiences start to shift your average more and more toward this different way of being. Now, this will happen all on its own. When you introduce new experiences, your system will naturally adjust its set point over time. But we can speed this process up even further. When you get one of these new experiences, when you stand up after a session and say, wow, I feel really good. This is incredible. This is, you know, whatever the case may be. You can amplify how impactful these are by giving yourself a few extra moments to really just tune in and be present with that sensation. Bring a bit of appreciation for it. And what that does is, it brings a lot of attention there, and you start to really speed up this trip over toward this new way of being. You start to shift your average farther and farther over until you wake up one day and realize, oh, this is me now. <laughs> you may not even recognize yourself back then. You've given yourself so many experiences. You've carved so many new synaptic and neural connections that your old way of doing things, your old way of moving, your old way of sitting and standing, your old way of carrying yourself, you might not recognize that version anymore. So that's one way that you might think of this. The other example that I often use with people is the example of a ski slope. And so you've got all of this snow falling on the mountains and of course, you can tell the most popular path down the slope because it has the deepest grooves. The most people go down that path the most frequently and so it is worn down over time. Snow starts to fill in. So these paths are sort of the habitual way of doing things, the way that you've always done things. But you might as we've talked about, get an experience of a new path, a new way that you could carry yourself, a new way even that you could move your shoulder. And you might say, oh, I like that path a lot more. So again, you can really pay attention to it when it happens, and you can give yourself more frequent experiences of it. 
practice it throughout the day. Practice that way of being. Practice embodying that trait that you want. And over time, you'll start to groove a new path down the mountain. And since it's still snowing, right, this old path might get a little fuzzier. It won't be your default. Essentially, you have a choice between one way of doing things and another. And this is the beauty of this type of work that we're doing, is we're giving you deliberate choices, deliberate options. Now, of course, in an ideal world, you have many different paths, many different paths that you could choose from. So you have not just one or two choices, but you have three, you have four. You could go back and forth between any of them. That is essentially maturity. Maturity in a psychophysical sense is being able to deliberately choose which path you want to go down in any given situation. It's being able to choose how you want to show up. It's being able to choose how you want to move yourself. Options are the currency that we acquire through this awareness and embodiment practice. And so hopefully these two models make a little bit more sense of what's going on when we dig into embodiment and somatics. And hopefully they make sense of this journey that you find yourself on at this point. Now, if you do have any other questions or any insights, any comments, go ahead and drop them uh, in the comments or in the chat, and we can talk through and keep the conversation going there.